Okay, welcome back. Today we're in the first module. We're asking what exactly is futuring? Just trying to get a very high level overview to what we're talking about here. So futuring is a systematic process for thinking about the future and a way of framing and forming possible scenarios about the future to gain insights into the best actions to take in the present. Uh, so systematic is uh, an important word. There's many ways of thinking about the future, but in futuring, we're trying to think about it in a um, systematic and coherent way. Um, futurists use what they see in the present as a view onto the future. Uh, so the present uh, aspect of it is important. We're looking at what exists already and analyzing that um, to watch trends and trying to envision what may happen but also um, they're aware that the future does not yet exist and thus is something to be created in the stories that we tell ourselves. So that's an important part of this, um, that the future does not yet exist and the way we think about it now can uh, shape how it plays out in the future. So futurists are looking uh, in futuring, we're looking at um, signals in the, presence, uh, in the present and the past uh, trends uh, to create possible scenarios plausible, possible, or desirable scenarios of the future. Futuring involves looking at both large scale drivers of change, but also uh, what we might call wild cards or black swans. Uh, so it's both uh, what is likely and, and, and plausible to play out, but it's also looking at these uh, things on the margins, uh, the unknown unknowns, uh, the, the, the non-linear uh, large events, the wild card black swan events uh, that involve great uncertainty. So it's taking that holistic view, um, not just what is likely to play out, but also um, where those unknowns lie and what possibly could come from that. So another key aspect of it is that uh, there are many futures. Um, so the word futures is plural, and that um, connotes a kind of foundational principle here uh, that the future does not exist yet um, and that it is not determined and there is not is there is not one future uh, but potentially many different futures the plurality of futures is one of the main premises without which the domain would have very little orientation future studies takes the starting point that there is not one but many potential futures with some being more likely than others starting with this premise implies that our actions in the present uh, in the past and the present will necessarily influence how the future unfolds. So it's important, this is important because what we're trying to do is um, not just try and predict the future as we'll talk about as we go through. Uh, that's quite often the approach, the idea that somehow the future is determined or given and we just need to predict it and kind of get in line. But we're trying to um, see that there is many uh, potential possible futures. And in thinking about the future and framing scenarios, we're actually creating it. Um, and that is important. It makes the, the domain of futuring important uh, because it means we can influence and shape the future. We're not just trying to uh, predict it. So in this context, the future is seen to, um, the future is seen to already exist in the present as a potential. Futuring thus can help us to act in the present. It can help us to become aware of the larger context in which our, our future unfolds and helps us to recognize what many may or may not um, be changing or change, be possible to change. Most importantly, being aware of how our actions may influence the future works to increase our sense of responsibility and agency in the present. present. So the aim is to create the future, not to be, not to look at the, the future in a deterministic way and say that it's given and, um, you know, te drivers, technological drivers or, or whatever it is, economic drivers are, are going to play out and they're going to unfold in a, in a deterministic way. And we just need to fit into that. Um, but it's trying to look at how we frame and understand the future um, as a creative thing that enables us to create the future. Most of the time we take a planned approach to the future, which is based upon the idea that the future is fixed. This approach though is self-limiting as it locks us into the assumption that there is only one possible future. The result is that we start to live out a future created by others and we lose our greatest sense um, of opportunity and potential to create the future and to occupy the future um, 
by telling stories, but telling stories that are realistic uh, because they're grounded in an analysis and an understanding of the present and how things may, may unfold. Uh, the aim is to uh, go from living out someone else's uh, understanding of the future um, and a seeming deterministic process um, to actually shaping, seeing how we can shape the future uh, by understanding the past and the present and uh, creating stories or scenarios about the future. We may not be able to predict the future, but if we do not reason about it, we cannot use it as a medium and method uh, for bringing something new into the world. So the idea is that the future is really a possible uh, potential for bringing something new into the world. And by, by using futures, by using scenarios and stories and, uh, and horizon scanning, we can actually think about um, how we might use a future as a potential to create something new, create a new um, understanding of the world and then work to bring that into um, into being. We can't predict the future, but we can try to invent it. To invent a future, we have to get clearer on what are our assets and how do we use the future as a source of potential. So that's the first module, uh, talking about uh, what exactly futures is and why we'd be interested in the context of systems innovation.